<laughs> Hello and welcome back to CIB Let's Plays! Uh, last part, I forgot to go in this room, so... We're gonna do that. We're gonna, in part four, visit this room! Sponsor today is... Where are we going with today? Um, well, I've been watching a lot of uh, Internet Historians, so let's go with NordVPN. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm NordVPN guy. Ah! Anyway, NordVPN, if you want a VPN that's not very good, you got Nord. Ah, crap, did we just lose our money from that? I can't believe uh, what Internet Historian gets away with with those... Uh... Ads, yeah, but he knows he knows that 15 million people are watching. Yeah. Our NordVPN knows that. That's that's why they don't care. But it is weird to see like a giga conglomerate doesn't care about stuff like that because they're usually just so petty. They're they're probably doing the uh, all news is good news kind of thing. So like you'll always remember those ads. Whereas somebody he's the only person whose ads I watch. Everybody else, when an ad comes up, I just skip it. You know. So, like, maybe that's a way to be like, oh, people will actually watch this instead of just immediately skipping. There's a, uh, an add-on for, like, Firefox and Chrome called, like, YouTube Ad Skip, where uh, it'll detect if uh, a video has, like, a sponsor spot, because it's really obvious. Like, sometimes I'll put it in, like, the uh, timeline, and sometimes other ways it's, like, just easier to tell. And it'll automatically skip it every time. Damn. The power of AI. So this is one of the things that they added in the remake. Uh, there's this whole side quest with Nicole and like finding out about Dr. Brennan and Nicole. So we're gonna try to do it all. It's not that bad. Oops. Isaac, close the door. You're letting all the air out. Also, I have brightness on 100 because the YouTube video ended up being pretty dark. So it looks alright. It just adds to the spookiness, bro. Right, we'll turn this down up here. I did turn down music, so like when there's a stinger when a ne necromorph shows up, uh, won't be as obnoxiously ear destroying. So yeah, how are we doing, people? Uh, all you right, like I'll being on rickety old uh, elevators inside of a ship that was one year from being decommissioned. I'll start. Uh, how in the heckin' heckerino are they gonna continue my favorite show, Rick and Morty, without the person who voices both the main characters, huh? Huh? Dude, there's probably, it's just like Mario, there's probably so many, like, uh, uh, like people that sound exactly like it, like interpreters. Wait, can, can I, Imposters, can, can I do my audition right now? Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Oh, oh, geez, Rick, oh, do we really have to go through that? You're Whoa. hired. Uh, uh, Morty, God is dead, and nothing matters, and there's a million of me. Oh, cr I just got an email from from Adult Swim. <laughs> I don't even know who makes it. <laughs> I guess Adult Swim. I have no idea. Uh, oh, no, actually, it was a cease and desist. Ah. Uh, hmm. Okay. The Ripper with damage upgrades is really good, but I am one away from upgrading the uh, pulse rifle. Okay. I guess. I think there's some uh, upgrades that I can buy from the shop now that I forgot to do. Honestly, the Ripper is my de facto weapon. Uh, even now, one upgrade is not the greatest, but once you have it like almost fully upgraded, it is insanely good. Yeah, the Ripper only goes this far away right. from you. So I think you mentioned last part that Dead Space, uh, one of the flaws is that you have to be really far away from the Necromorphs. Well, when you're using a Ripper, that's not the case. That is true. 
I will I will admit, uh, both times I played the game, I just literally stuck with the uh, plasma cutter the whole way through. Because when you do get it strong, it's friggin' awesome. It is awesome. And I'm not the kind of person generally to do a new game plus. So the way I look at it is like, okay, I have one playthrough. I'm just gonna make it as fun as possible for one playthrough. I, uh, there's a couple games I'll play through multiple times. Like I did uh, RE4, of course, RE Village. But a lot of stuff I just, New Game Plus is whatever. It's over, it's over for me when the game's over, usually. It depends on how much I enjoy the game. Yeah. And how long it takes. Like, I did 100%, um, what the heck's the name of that game? Uh, the Castlevania type game, Blood something. Oh, uh, Bloodstained. Yeah. Right. Bloodstained, the 2D, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the newer one. But it took me so long to beat it that I'm not gonna do some sort of second playthrough. And now... Jeez, Isaac, calm down. You're just running for a little bit. It's okay. This room looks normal. Words, 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 words. Yeah, like, in in this experience, how can you ever even be sure nothing's there so you get a time to read this stuff, you know? Oh, yeah, this one. Hello? 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 I miss the just jumping from one uh, place to the other. Where is it? I hear it. It's Wait. right behind you! Playing this game without headphones sucks. Where is it? It sounds so close! It certainly sounds like it's behind oh. you. There. No! That's what you get. Neki! Necromorph! Uh, so like, there's lots of videos now on like, every site with RE4 remake stuff, and I'm just not looking at it. If I see anything about it, even like channels I like, I'm just like, nope! At this point, there's like, what, one and a half months? It's like, dude, I can't wait without spoiling everything. I realize it's a remake. I get it. I understand. But part of the fun with the remake is seeing what they change, you know? It, yeah. I hate being spoiled about games I like. All right, there's one more. Where is it? That took a lot less than one. Yes. I think that's part of the reason I don't, uh normally consume newest product uh, just because I take my time on everything and I don't want to have to like like with Last of Us like I have to avoid all Last of Us threads the TV show because I'm like I just want to enjoy it for what it is you know I don't want to like even though you hate it <laughs> I don't I don't hate it I, I just think there's flaws to it no! This looks like a safe environment to work. The girl who plays Ellie is just not a very convincing Ellie. She's not, from what I can tell, a bad actress. She's not just a very convincing Ellie. Looks like the centrifuge is back Isn't she like, like, isn't she from Game of Thrones or yeah. something? Okay. Yeah, her thing in Game of Thrones was she was like a powerful, like, queen or ruler or whatever she was at like a young age. And like, yeah, she was like, Pretty, pretty, pretty cool in that. I think the major problem is they kind of just like took her Game of Thrones character. I'm not gonna make it. And uh, hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> Thirty-five. Okay. Kind of put it into the into Last of Us. I think there's no two thing right here. So my major complaint with her character so far, I mean, with literally no spoilers, is like I don't care. You can literally she, talk. Well, about just it if you for want. people, she. In the game, 
it took her a while to like open up and like start like messing with Joel and stuff like that. Yeah, she was very reserved. And in this one, she already is like wearing the pants in the relationship, like literally from the moment go. And like, what you're telling me an HBO show does that? Yeah. And like, I get strong, independent woman, totally fine with that. I literally have no problem. But like, if you're gonna be a faithful adaptation, like, there was a scene. In in the first episode they meet where like she was essentially questioning everything about Joel and he was like no more questions and but she kept like asking questions she was like she was like what and it's like bro so essentially they're putting uh I you know they know what Last of Us 2 Ellie's like and they're like let's just start into that right now so it's like okay yeah, who cares and Last of Us 3 is being made, I guess. I heard a rumor about it. I don't know if it's... I don't think it's, like, officially confirmed. Well, 2013 to 2020, that's seven years. So we can expect it in, like, five to six years, I guess. And then freaking Tears of the Kingdom is 70 bucks, 70 U.S. dollars. We yeah, I don't know what is going on with that. That is, like... So weird. I just don't understand because like Nintendo games never price drop, so they could get sixty bucks for it forever. Yeah, it's like, like it's six years later, and I still order two or three copies of Breath of the Wild new from our distributor every single week. You know what I mean? Like, what's the what's the deal? Are you not making your money back on like Breath of the Wild and these other things you sell at sixty bucks forever? I really, I for mean, for a system that has the third most units sold ever. Like, yeah, get out of here. And. Uh, there's some uh, other weird things that the Switch generation has done. Like, you know, uh, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, when it first came out for Wii U, it was 50 bucks. Well, when they ported it, uh, it was $60 on the Switch. Yeah. And they added, like, almost nothing to it. It's like, cool. Yeah, I don't get it. I'm not a huge fan of... I think the other thing that's weird is, like... There are certain games on PS5 that are 70 bucks, and there are certain that are 60, and they're all AAA games. For instance, Resident Evil, 5, Resident Evil 4 Remake on the PS5 is 60 bucks, but Dead Space was 70. I'm gonna go there. So it's like, I, I don't understand. They're not like Sony made products, you know? Next section we're doing is pretty Ripper related, so I'm going to upgrade it. I can't wait till Microsoft tries to do the same thing with whatever IP they still have. Singular IP, not IPs, IP. Next Halo game, 70 bucks, please. They're still making, uh, what's that game called? Skull and Bones, that's still a thing, I guess. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything about that. I don't really care about any Xbox properties. I know, I'm just, I want them to have something. Bethesda, I mean, uh, I Microsoft know. owns Bethesda now, and they just released a game called Hi-Fi Rush. And apparently that game's really good, but it's like kind of like a lower budget release. Uh, it seems pretty interesting, but again, it's only on PC and Xbox, and I don't know. Yeah, Microsoft owns Nintendo just selling so much hardware and software, why they don't, like, I'm not just saying hire more people, but, like, get, like, other, like, double-A developers, like, kind of like Sony has with Naughty Dog and stuff like that. Like, what a... Sony is, I mean, uh, Nintendo is definitely about uh, maximizing profit margins, for sure. Uh, I just... They never release any, like, budget numbers, but they're definitely, um mostly about uh like getting as much money possible out of their games they never price drop they want them to last as long as possible uh they probably just make so much money 
Dude, people literally still. Uh, cause I think, I think Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U was 50. I think that was the standard pricing for Wii U games. No, that was 60. That was 60, okay. Uh, yeah, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze was a weird one. That one was only 50 bucks for some reason. Loud room, sorry. It's really loud, I don't know why. It's don't... the engine room! Alright, so we're getting the flamethrower. Uh, flamethrower really sucks, but we need to have it for a while because of the little little craps that spawn soon uh and i pretty much exclusively use it for that uh so at this point we will probably get some flamethrower fuel uh as drops which sucks but the good thing is that flamethrower fuel does kind of sell for a lot so it's not horrible but you'll notice that like i have like 120 um uh plasma energy for the pulse or the plasma cutter and like that ammo is just gonna evaporate because we're gonna get way less drops that's just how this game works. Like, what guns you have in your inventory depends on what drops you have. So, like, my thought with Nintendo is, like, people are perfectly fine with their stuff not being as graphically intensive, which, honestly, I don't care. As long as something's fun, it's fun. Whatever. But the reason games take so long to make is, like, the ridiculous attention to detail on graphics. So if they're not putting that into it, why is something like Metroid Prime 4 literally, like, never coming out? Like, Prime I, I 4, don't understand it. Yeah, Prime 4 is an anomaly. I have absolutely no idea what's going on with that game. I get that the first uh, build was made by Nintendo, and then they canceled it because they weren't happy, I guess. And then they moved the project over to Retro. But the thing about Retro is that they haven't made a single game. Why is it so dark? Yeah, that was like dead dark. Like there's some RNG sometimes with lighting and sometimes when it's dark a necromorph will spawn. Especially when you're backtracking you'll notice that. But that was just weird. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Prime 4. Retro hasn't made a single game since Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Wow. And... By the time that they gave the project a retro, which was around 2018, I think, uh, it's been years since Retro made a game, and they didn't make anything since, and there's nothing that materialized from those empty five years of nothing. I just don't know what's going on with Retro. They literally have not made a game in almost a decade. And, like... Retro is like a second party studio. They, they are literally owned by Nintendo. And like, Retro getting away with not making a game for a decade while being on Nintendo's payroll? Like, what is going on with that studio? And they just did a Nintendo Direct today where they announced a uh, Prime Trilogy, or not Prime Trilogy, not Prime Trilogy, just Prime 1 Remastered and nothing else. Yeah, the funny thing is, they already have the... Depending on how they would want to do it, because of Prime Trilogy, they have all the games already made with motion controls, and they have one or two made with button controls. Now, I don't know if three would be possible to, to move to, like, so that you could use, like, a pro controller for it. I don't know how that works. But, I don't know, it just seems like... It shouldn't take that long. Yeah, and here's the real kicker. So, on the Wii U, they released the Prime Trilogy digitally on the Wii U shop for $20 for th three games. And now they're doing a Prime 1 Remastered, which, by the way, it looks almost identical to the GameCube version. Just, like, maybe slightly tweaked models. Oh, it's models. not a remake, it's just a remaster. It's just a remaster, and they're charging 40 bucks for that one game alone. I'm legitimately surprised they didn't charge 60 I I guess I should be glad, but... Oh, hi. Right. You know, last part, I was like, you know what this game never does? It never does Necromorphs playing dead. And now it's just, like, Days. trying to prove me wrong. What? How are you not dead? I hate spitters. Spitters have, like, a weird amount of HP, too. Alright. Here's the question of the part for the YouTube land and also Trev. You ready? All right. For 
com uh, compendiums or remakes or remasters, whatever, what is the worst bang for the buck ever released? So, for instance, um, uh, you could take a game and remaster it and, and bring it out for 20 bucks, and very few people could complain about it, right? Or you could bring out Metroid Prime, say they did it for 60. That would be an awful bang for it. Yeah, I think it's Skyward Sword HD. That game was originally 50 bucks. They did a re-release for 60. Um, they did some minor tweaks with the gameplay, but it really is not like a ton. What about uh, so that being a full price release is kind of insulting. Yeah, and honestly, people didn't even like it on the yeah, Wii. And, and yeah, it's already a polarizing game. What about uh, Last of Us PS5? That's a good one. That's Seventy. It should have been fifty bucks. It's seventy USD. Yeah, that that one does look like they put like some time and effort into it. Like Skyward Sword HD, I still stick with because it's the same game. They're running it through an emulator. Um, they're just up the textures, but it has the same like pol uh, polygons for like all the models. So Last of Us Part One remake is pretty bad, from but I, I still think it's Skyward Sword. They use the uh, gameplay mechanics from Last of Us 2 and put it into the Last of Us 1 remake, so it's like, it, it is kind of a remake. You could technically say uh, the Silent Hill HD collection. Uh, it technically would have been great bang for the buck, and I believe it came out at 50 bucks. But it was so bad that technically it is not yeah, a good bang for the buck. I kind of feel bad. I mean... The dev studio behind it went on to make Downpour, so they're not a very talented studio, but apparently the reason why the HD collection was so bad is because they were given an incomplete code. It was like an alpha build, because like Konami lost the source uh, code for the original game. So like they were literally given like a half-finished like build. So that's rough. I got a weird one. All right. There was a PS3 disc that had Journey and two other um, indie titles on it. Like, very, like, simple indie titles. I uh, actually kind of want to know what, what it was. Okay, it was uh, Journey... Flower and uh, I literally can't read that. Uh, what the heck is that? Flow, a game called Flow. So Journey is a walking simulator. It's a very beautiful game, and it's one of those things where it's more art than video game. Dude, what is going on with this Necromorph? Was I just not hitting it, or did it have a million HP? But, uh, so Journey is, like, literally maybe an hour long. Maybe. Then they have Flower, which was an early PS3 game, where all it is is, like, you're, you're a pedal, and you, and you fly around a, uh, like, a meadow, picking up other, like, pedals, and, and it's just, it's almost like a tech demo. Like, it's a very pretty tech demo, and as you go, you get more... You get more pedals that follow you. And I assume Flow is a very similar thing. That released brand new for 40 bucks. Which, normally you'd be like, 40 bucks for three games, great. But, like, that might be, like, three hours of game. Yeah. Although it was released for the same system it came out for digitally, it wasn't, like, high-res new one, you know. But still, that's pretty bad. And Journey is one of those games you wouldn't play more than once. I mean, maybe, like, years later. But there's no reason you'd be like, let me revisit this. Yes, Got him! What? Oh. That was me. Live audio call? Nice. Station 
Yeah, going back to talking about Nintendo again, I have such mixed feelings about Nintendo pretty much all the time. But I just think that they're just like, they do not want to repeat the days of the Wii U ever again. I think they're going to stick with the Switch for, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the Switch has another two years in prime time. It's selling so well. All their initiatives are doing great. Like, their paid online is, like, no one complains about it. It's, like, it's literally okay when Nintendo does anything. And they're selling, like, full price ports. And... But they still make games I like. But... Man, I just, like, hate them as a business. I hate all the big three. Microsoft I definitely hate the most. Sony I also don't like, and Nintendo I'm starting to really dislike, too. Yeah, somebody asked me the other day, like, when a new Switch will be out, and I'm like, why would they do that? Yeah. It's six years later, and it still sells so well. Like, I don't think they're going to do a Switch Pro, like, at all. Of course they're going to be, like, working on something, like, R&D in the background. Of course. Yeah. But, like... I, I don't know. It's just, why would you? Like, literally every week from our distributor, I order, like, 50 or 60 new pieces of software. And every week I have to order more. Because, like, Animal Crossing still sells for 60 bucks. And Donkey Kong for 60 bucks. And Luigi's Mansion for 60 bucks. And remember, Animal Crossing has literally shipped 35 million units. So 35 million times $60 a pop. I mean, retailer costs and distributor costs, uh, they're probably still making, like, $45. And digitally, they're making literally, like, every cent. They have made, like, for games like that, like, well in excess of $1 billion for a single game. So, yeah, why would they mess with that? Especially when they're the one company that can be behind the times in terms of like graphical and innovation and stuff like that in that in that sense and people like do not care like yeah they'll be your hardcore like sony or microsoft or pc fanboys that are like oh it looks so bad but like your average person does not care your average person is just like oh mario party cool you know Which we still haven't done Mario Party Superstars, I think. I think we've done, like, almost every Mario Party game but that one at this point. Uh, I mean, there's just no reason to. Just me and you would be boring. Yeah, true. So, if, like, Ben or, I don't know, someone okay. came. I think the payment and life support are holding. So far. 